Hello everyone, what's up? It's me again, Jugmaster 3 And this is going to be... Oh damn, can't see the shit Well, anyway, this is gonna be my top 5 of the month for the month of June and July The reason why is because my previous uploads of those two videos um, I deleted them, uh, mainly because there's, there was basically only this freeze frame of me And there was nothing else in that so uh, neither of those videos really worked so that's the reason why i decided to redo both of those top five lists in one single video so uh, we're gonna start with the top five of the month for the month of june and then we're gonna continue to top five of the month for the month of july i'm not gonna show any of the films in these uh, in these lists but uh, if you want to know more information about the films uh, make sure to uh, visit that IMDb page that I'm probably going to leave as a link down below and you'll, you'll basically get to these two lists. So uh, yeah, let's begin with the top five of the month for the month of uh, June. At number five we have a film called Fight for Your Life from the 70s which was part of the whole VG Nasties uh, era and this is basically about this family that gets, that are like taken hostage in their own home. And uh, of course these like, this move has been deemed like so damn racist by basically everyone and uh, even though it was made, I can only imagine like back in the 70s this must have been really controversial uh, but I would say it's quite tame by today's standards because I've seen way what much worse material than this but I still think this was a great si sort of like revenge terror type of film or uh, exploitation film in general so uh, yeah uh, fight for your life at number five and at number four we have a film by Andrei Tarkovsky uh, let's see Tarkovsky yeah Tarkovsky uh, a film called Nostalgia which is which is probably one of his later films I think this was next to his, I think it was one of his later films this was might be one of the okay I'm just mumbling here but uh, his last film was probably the film called The Sacrifice, I believe, but I think this one was the one that came out before that. Uh, this one, once again, when it comes to Tarkovsky, you can't really describe any of his films in any particular way. I think those films are just meant to be watched and experienced. So, uh, yeah, Nostalgia, really good film. Then at number three is a film which I will try to get a hold of, but I think there's a, basically only like a VHS copy of this film. Uh, around so but this film is called Rich Girl from 1991 uh, This has Jill Sholin in it, and I think she's a really underrated actress, and I think she is really gorgeous um, And I think this is a really interesting storyline. It's basically about Jill Sholin. She lives this uh, upper-class life in uh, I think it's somewhere in Hollywood Los Angeles or somewhere around that place and uh, she's tired of that type of life that th her father basically tells her everything she needs to do all the time and she can't do anything. So she decides to just run away from home and uh, take up an ordinary job. So she starts to work at this club as a waitress. And uh, there's a band there playing music. And uh, by the way, the music in this film is just really amazing in my opinion. And um, she immediately gets uh, really like in love with the lead singer in this band. So yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that when it comes to the storyline. But yeah, this one is really great in my opinion. I think more people should see it. So uh, yeah, I'll try to get a hold of that film uh, on VHS. And unfortunately, I don't think it's been available on either DVD or Blu-ray. So yeah. Then at number two, we have The Church, which was recommended to me by The Cryptic Cinema. Uh, and I think this was a really amazing and atmospheric type film. This might be my favorite Michel Suave film uh, that I've seen so far. I've seen Stage Fright and uh, De La Morte de la Mora as well. But this is probably my favorite one, uh, to be honest. I think most people tend to prefer De La Morte de la Mora, but I'm probably more towards um, leaning towards the church as the better film. So, uh, yeah, great film. If you haven't seen it and if you like Italian horror films, check out The Church. Then, at number one for the month of June was a film that got sent to me by one of my friends and I really loved this one. The film is called VFW which came out last year. Uh, it has a great cast. It has Fred Williamson and uh, and some re other really great actors in it. And I think the, uh, the storyline is really interesting. It's basically about these older people that are like 
old Vietnam War veterans and they go to this specific pub which is basically their uh, hangout place and uh, of course there are some problems outside because this is basically like the neighborhood nearby neighborhood is basically just filled with drugs and violence and of course there's like one of these girls that run into this bar or this their hangout and she has stolen drugs from the main bad guy you can say so it's basically up to them to just fight these uh, these bad guys off basically so uh, yeah this is, was an amazing film I loved this film I would say it has some sort of similarities with Hobo with a shotgun it seems like there is very similar in tone uh, so I would say that goes along like with a really good double bill with those two films so uh, yeah VFW at number one for the month of June now we're gonna move on the reason why I look at towards this place is because I have the screen with all of the titles over here so yeah uh, now let's move on to the top five of the month for the month of July and uh, at number five we have a Don Bluth film called all dogs go to heaven which i think was a really amazing film um the reason why i started to get more and more into these older films is because i'm so tired of uh disney films in general or like tired of disney like i, I just can't stand disney anymore so i was like okay what other like animated films can you watch well you just go to don bluth and you get quality films and I just think it's so unfortunate that Don Bluth hasn't really made any films since the early 2000s. So, uh, yeah, but anyway, All Dogs Go to Heaven. I think this was an amazing film. And I know there is a sequel out there as well, but I haven't seen that one. And I've only heard pretty bad things about it, to be honest. So uh, we'll see if I will ever check that one out. But yeah, All Dogs Go to Heaven. Really amazing film. Then at number four, we have Dead Snow 2. Red vs. Dead, I believe it's called. Uh, I think this was an amazing sequel to the first one. I mean, I'm a big fan of the first one, but I would even say that this sequel is slightly better than the original, uh, which doesn't, I mean, that doesn't really happen too often, to be honest. So, um, and it seems like, I'm not really sure, this, this has, I think this must have had a much, much higher budget than the, uh, than the first one. I'm not going to spoil the second one, but... It just seems like they wanted to make a third film, but so for some reason it feels like they're not going to make a third one. Uh, I just think that's really unfortunate because I really love this one now and I would love to get a third film in this series. So uh, yeah, Dead Snow 2. Uh, if you haven't seen this one and you like the first one, go check this one out right away. Uh, awesome zombie action fun, so yeah. Then at number 3 is the film I watched on TV. And uh, right after I watched this and I saw their end credits roll, I was like, okay, I need to get this film right away. So I just went online and ordered it right away, right after the end credits. So yeah, that's how much of a fan I was of this film. And the film is called Strange Days, directed by, directed by Catherine Bigelow. And this has an amazing cast in it. It has Ralph Fiennes, Juliette Lewis, Angela Bassett. Um, uh, what's his name? Tom Seesmore? I can't really pronounce his name. I probably butchered his last name, but... This is such an amazing film which blends like these these weird like atmospheres like sometimes it looks really rough and sometimes it looks really clean and smooth and I really like the combination of that and the characters themselves are really interesting as well especially Ralph Fiennes character um, so uh, yeah it's a nice nice mix between like futuristic stuff and like old like shattered like environment so yeah. That was number three on this list, Strange Days. Uh, then at number two, we have, this is, must be one of my favorite, not favorite, but this has to be one of the very best animated films, like when it, com when it comes to how they made the film, because it looks amazing. Even though I watched it on a DVD, it really looked like it had Blu-ray quality on that DVD. That's how good picture and everything was in this film. And the film is called Sword of the Stranger, which came out in 2007. And I think it looks amazing considering the year it came out. And another thing which I find to be really interesting is that I've watched a film quite recently called uh, Dead Space Aftermath, I believe. And that one looked terrible in some of those animated stuff and the CG they used in that. And that movie came out in 2011, and this movie that I watched, Sword of the, Sword of the Stranger, came out in 2000, 2007. I just think that 
uh, Dead Space Aftermath is awful when it comes to that if you compare the two films. I know probably this one had a much higher budget, but still. Um, yes, War of the Strangers is basically about this young boy who teams up with this samurai who's basically called the No Name. So he's like this... It sort of feels like he's the type of character as in um, the good, the bad, and the ugly, the Clint Eastwood character, uh, because he's just some stranger that you don't really know about. He's just like a big mystery. So they team up, and uh, the main reason why is because he wants to save this little kid's dog, basically. And uh, after this, they get like bounty hunters or something out after them, and it's basically up to this no name character to defend himself. And the kid from these assassins, basically, or this army of soldiers. So, uh, yeah, amazing film. If you haven't seen that one, and if you like animated films or like, yeah, anime in general, check this one out. This is amazing. Sword of the Stranger. Then, at number one is a film which this is sort of like a little. I've been cheating when I did this list, really, because the thing is, I have seen this film before. I know I have that as a rule that I never. I never put films I've seen before on the list, but this I made an exception for this because I have seen this before, but I, the, when I saw that previously, I was only five or six years old, or maybe even younger, and I haven't seen it since, and I rewatched it this July, and the film is called The Land Before Time, another film by John Bluth, and this has to be his best film to date. Um, and this was around the time when Disney really struggled with their films. They had released films that didn't really do that too well in at the box office. And this one pretty much threatened Disney in a way. Uh, so who knows? Maybe if... I mean, if Disney wouldn't have uh, released uh, The Little Mermaid the year after this one, maybe Disney would have um, gone under. So, uh, yeah. I don't really know what to say about this, but this is a great family film. I think most people probably already know about this one, and uh, if you got kids, uh, show them this one. This is a childhood. Uh, this is a childhood that everyone needs. A uh, film uh, like uh, Land Before Time. So, I know they made like so damn many sequels to this one as well. I think I've only seen two or three of them, and I think they were really bad in comparison to the first one. I don't say they are the worst thing ever, but then again, it's. They are still okay, if I remember correctly. So, uh, yeah. That's it for this video. And hopefully there's, there's going to be no glitch or anything like that. But we'll see how it goes. So, hope everyone enjoyed and didn't get bored. And, uh, yeah, I know I shouldn't have said didn't get bored. Because otherwise you wouldn't stay to the end. So, I uh, hope to see you again as soon as possible. So, see you next time. Bye-bye.